All right, welcome back. We're here with another Chime episode, and we've got Eric again. Eric, I think we all became best friends with you over the last couple of weeks. It's uh, it's cool that you're jumping on so often. I'm gonna miss when you don't, but let's let's hope that you can continue to jump in with us. We got Adam, who's a pro at systems and processes. Mark, my co-host, he's an agent out here with me in Southern California, and obviously Eric, you're like the the Chime Systems Processes guy, like the official one. So something like that. Yeah. I don't even know what your title is, but thanks for being with us, and we're gonna talk about the CMA. So Eric. Take it away. Perfect, let's do it. Let me just pull up a demo account here and we'll get started. Today, the, the goal is to show you how to build the perfect CMA. And what I mean by that is how you can really use all of the features within Chime to quickly and easily create that CMA. It's a fairly recent feature that we've got. Um, I, I guess it was released kind of the end of last year, right? But fairly new, all things considered and constantly growing. We're, we're adding new features to it. We're not done with it. So I think that's important to, to, to point out as well. At the end of our uh, call today, we'll, I'll try to show you, or at least tell you about some of the features that are coming. So, all right, let me share my screen. Should have my demo account up now. I see it. Perfect, I got a couple of them up, but uh, we'll jump between them and use them to show kind of what it all looks like as you're building a CMA. So the first thing you need to know about the, the Chime CMA is that it is an add-on product. Not everybody needs Chime's version of the CMA. You might have something via your MLS, via your brokerage. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. That's why it's an add-on feature, right? So if you don't need it, it's not built into your price. Uh, it's something that you can add on if you want to. If you do want to add it on your account, then you can just go to the, the Chime marketplace once you're logged into the, the system. Up here on the top right is where you'll find that on the navigation bar. And it's under comparative market analysis on that left menu. So yeah. in this account, I've already added one, but I'm logged in as the, the account owner. So that allows for me to even purchase the CMA for anyone else on my team if, if I wanted to. So I could click here and I could go through kind of the presentation page that tells you what our CMA tool does. Um, and then I could actually purchase on behalf of my team members if I wanna give them access. So it is $20 per month per user that's going to have access to that feature. So that will enable them to create unlimited number of CMAs. There's, there's no limit on that. And you can then, they'll, they'll have that feature enabled immediately once you add it for them. So that's the, how you actually add the CMA product to your platform. Easy. Now, if you did wanna try that out for the first time, I can't remember off the top of my head what the limit is, but I believe you can, come here to the campaigns page, navigate to CMA, and it will walk you through the free trial option of it. So basically it'll let you create three, I think it's three CMAs, uh, just to kind of test it out, see if they'll accomplish what you need. So feel free okay. to give it a go before you actually purchase it to make sure it addresses the, the check, checks the boxes that you need checked. That's cool. Um, so, that's the, how you add it via the marketplace. Now, one thing you need to know about the CMA is obviously like any CMA, it, it, should, be, it should be powered by sold listing data, right? Now, yeah. not every MLS gives that sold listing data to Chime. Not every MLS provides that sold listing data feed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, technically a CMA can be created without sold listing data, but you're just going off of active and pending listings. So it's not going to be as powerful without that sold listing data. That would just be something I'd remember, I'd remind you of. Um, well, that's a Eric, limitation by the MLS. Question yeah. here, before we sign up, do we find out if our MLS has that information uh, going through Chime or how do we find out? Yeah, you should be able to, feel free to check with your onboarding specialist if you're, or if you're getting started with our platform or our support team. You'll be able to tell if you look at your, at your actual, uh, your website, your website should show sole listing data. If you have it, okay. it will be available on, uh, on the sole listings page. If you don't have it, then it won't be connected. Right. By default, Perfect. we will add that to your website. If it's yep. so real, real quick on that. If you go to your, <clears throat> if you go to your CMS tool and you go into your, uh, listing filters, mm -hmm. if you show, like just add, add a group to be sold 
And if it doesn't, if it shows any number other than zero in the, or like the, the listing selected there, if it shows any number other than zero, that means your MLS will allow sold data on the IDX feed. My oh. MLS does not allow it because I'm not the actual broker of my firm. So I can't display anything as far as sold data on my website. So if I were to put that filter on, it would show listing selected as being zero for sold. That's easy, quick way on this screen right here, how to tell whether you have that data feed allowed by your MLS or not. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, that's a, it's exactly where you find it. So, and, and you could also go to your live website and it would be displayed there by default as well. So lots of ways to know if you've got that seller, that seller data or that sole listing data. Obviously it's gonna make your CMA that much better, right? You don't have to have it, but it, any good CMA should include sold listing data when available. Now, there's a few different places where you're going to be encouraged to use the CMA and uh, the system is going to try and point you in the direction of building that CMA as quickly as possible when, whenever you can. So on the, on the campaigns page, that's where we're at. This is where the CMA tool lives, as you can see on this left menu. You'll right here at the top, there's going to be some suggestions. So when you have certain leads in your system that have had certain behavior that would really encourage you or would be appropriate to send them a CMA for, then they'll appear here, appear here at the top as suggestions. So you can see we have Sammy Seller has requested a home valuation. Mm -hmm. Now, the home valuation is an automated value based on the data that we have feeding in, but it's not going to be as detailed and, and accurate as a CMA. Someone yeah. that requests a home valuation is a perfect candidate for that CMA, for creating a CMA. So right here at the top, we have a, the ability to create a CMA for that, that specific address that the home valuation was requested for. Now, you can also create a, uh, a, a buyer CMA as well. And we'll go over that in a, in a minute. We'll start with the seller CMA, but there's, there's different actions on the website and different behaviors that will trigger those suggestions here at the top. Other places that it will, will uh, create those include within a lead record itself. So if I go to Sammy Sellers lead record, you'll see that I have um, here on the left side my, where my properties are tracked. I'm highlighting that in red right now. Mm -hmm. there is this little icon next to them that allows for me to easily create a CMA. So if they have a home address that's listed on their, their lead record or any address, if it's an investment property, it, as long as it's in that selling category, it's going to let you create that seller CMA right here, which is with the click of a button. And if they are having buyer activity on the website, like they requested a showing, same mm -hmm. thing, there's still that button that's going to allow for you to easily create a, a CMA from a buyer perspective. So you can see if it's uh, the farm, fair market value for that, that listing. That's cool. I love that. Oh. So those are a couple of quick places. And there's another one up here at the top. If I click on the quick action menu mm -hmm. right there, you can see there is create CMA report. Easy. So all over throughout the platform, as you can see, there's a lot of places for you to create a CMA. Now let's just dive in and show you how to actually build a CMA. I think that would be a great place to, to start. So let's build together a, a buyer or a seller CMA. Let's start with the seller CMA. So I'm going to do that in this case from scratch. I'm just going to click add new on the CMA page in the, in the CRM. Yeah. And right at the top, it will let me choose who's the audience. Is it a buyer or is it a seller, right? This is where I choose between those two versions. In this case, we're doing seller. So we'll search for our leads name in this search bar. So we'll search for Sammy Seller. Got it. We find them. A lead name is required. You can't just create it for someone that's not in your database. Uh, so we, obviously, that's intentional. You you want to track that CMA being sent and everything as they. So, engage. Eric, would we have to create a contact first before we're here if they're not in the system? Yes, uh, you would. Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. Good thing to point out. Yep. You, we always want that in here so that there is a record of that CMA being sent and so that you can track when they've engaged with it. We'll kind of Got get into that a little later. Cool. So the report name, you'll see that it automatically created, it automatically pulled in the address from some of their most recent activity, but I'm just gonna overwrite that and say, this is a CMA report for Sammy Seller. Uh, you can customize that as you see fit, but it will auto-populate with uh, an address by default. Now down here is a, the address that automatically populated, like I said, from the property that was 
recorded on their lead record. But I'm going to just search a, I'm gonna search for an address. I will do, let's see. Uh, we're just gonna type in an address in my area here. Okay, so we're gonna search for a place in Goodyear, Arizona. And I am going to choose a featured image. Now, just talking briefly about a featured image, if this is a seller lead, uh, you might not have an image of their property. You could drive by, take a, a picture of it. I don't know if anyone else on here has some suggestions of where you might find that, um, or you could upload some sort of a, an image that looks like your area, a generic image that would fit the, into a CMA. Mm -hmm. So we'll just grab right here as a, uh, a test. I wanted to find one that looked decent. We have lots of uh, images here on, there we go, we'll use that one. It's a good one. Okay, so we grabbed our featured image. Um, it already puts in the location point. It's a single prop, single family home. We are going to go four beds and uh, two and a half baths, 2,000 square feet. This is going to be important information for me to find those comps. So I'll click continue now. Okay. All right. Step number two is where you're actually going to select the comps. You're going to select the properties that you want on that CMA. Now, um, at the top, you can see all the filters that have been populated based on the automated uh, process we have in place, but you can erase those if you'd like, just by hitting the X on each of them, mm -hmm. or you can come up to the filters option and choose additional criteria. So oh, you can cool. see this is quite a list that you could get very specific if you wanted uh, from filters at the MLS. Wow. So this will help you find very specific comps that you could put on your CMA. I like that. In this case, I'm, I'm okay with uh, that, that criteria. Um, what we've got here on the right side is the kind of the search results. It's found three active listings. You'll notice they all have check marks on the boxes. So it's grabbed those as comps. Um, there's one pending listing. It grabbed that one as well. There are 45 sold listings. It's just wow. grabbed, I think, the first five of them. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and click on select all. What that does is it... Um, it will grab the maximum number. A CMA can only have a maximum number of 30 comps on it. You wouldn't want to go too crazy, right? No, um, you definitely don't want to go and, up that high either. Yeah. yeah. That's but good. in this example, I'll just show you the limit of it. So yeah. this will pull in those, those uh, comps to your list. Your final list is going to be up here in the top. If you selected, there's your subject property. There's your active listings. There's your sold, uh, pending listing. And then you've got 26 sold. Okay. So this gives you a good idea of your, your comps. Now I'm going to click on continue. Here's where we actually do the estimated price. Uh, there is a, the final estimated price, of course, is going to be that middle ground between your suggested price range. That's the, the range right here. And you can mm -hmm. edit this. This is all expecting your expertise as an agent. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can't do that for you. Um, we can get you close and provide the, the estimates based on the comps you've selected, but you will have the final say on what's displayed here. All right, cool. And there's a summary in this pricing guide based on status. You've got active, sold, or pending, what that range is, including price per square foot. So we'll, we'll scroll down. This is where you actually have the list of all of your comps. If you wanted to, you could put uh, hit the heart next to them. All that does is it adds a heart to it later on. So you can see it's one of your favorites uh, that you could compare to. Um, and if you wanted to, to reorder those, you could also do so using by dragging and dropping right here and uncheck them. If you had a had second thoughts about including some of them on the final list, you could just uncheck them on, on this one here and they won't be on your CMA. All right. I like that, dude. Clicking That's on continue. Easy. Yeah, should be pretty, pretty uh, user-friendly here. Now, this is the part we'll want to spend some time on. This is when you're actually choosing the template for your CMA and you're building out what it'll actually look like. Okay. Uh, for context, the default CMA is going to have all of the pages. So a CMA is, consists of, of pages or blocks, whatever you want to call them. But the default CMA includes all of the available options that we have. Whereas these other opt here are just, um, they're intended for specific purposes. So you'll see here right now with the default CMA selected, we've got 19 pages. But if I click on the win a listing option, that uh -huh. goes down to 12. I'm the pro, it goes to 16. 
So they're still going to use the same pages, but there's going to be less of them depending on the template you select. Dude, I like that. Is there is there something in the works where we can have our own custom one where it says whatever we want to name it? Yes, uh, we are working on custom templates for 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 teams, brokerages, uh, allowing for you to put a little more branding on there as well. Yes, that is in the works. Nice. And awesome. then for, cool. for people like Adam, who, who are going to name it like the barbecue method or something amazing, <laughs> um, can, are we going are we going to be able to share that with other people outside of our our personal Chime account? That might be further down the road, uh, but I don't see why not at some point in the future. Got it. Not mm -hmm. short term on that one, but uh, maybe. So when you're actually choosing the template, I'm just going to choose the default CMA option. You'll see I can preview the template on the right side here uh, from desktop, mobile, or PDF. The format that this will go out in is, is a link and a downloadable PDF document. So nice. you'll, you'll want to be able to preview and see what that looks like in all of those formats. The pages on the left side can be selected and you can drag them and, and reorder them if you would like. So if you wanted to put something before the other uh, on the page list, then you can do so. Or you can even delete one of those pages if you would like, hit that trash icon. Now, when I select any of these, the preview will change to that page. Okay. So I can see what it will actually look like. And you'll notice that some of these don't have an edit icon, others do. So yeah. title page, for example, if I click on title page, it will actually let me edit the title right there. So comparative market analysis, I can change that if I wanted to. Cool. Um, call it a CMA instead. It updates in the live preview. Nice. Um, I can change the logo. If I had a special logo for my CMAs or my, my headshot, my contact information, all of that can be customized right here if I wanted to make that slightly different. Uh, the same with the agent resume. This will automatically pull in from your website website uh, bio on your profile there. But if you wanted to change that up, you could do so. In other words, some of these pages have the ability to edit the content, others do not, right? Uh, we're working on the ability to allow for you to add custom pages as well. But currently, your the pages that are built in are the only ones you can use. So I there's like a lot of different dude. pages. We'll try cool. to show you what the final product looks like um, okay. once we actually build the CMA. But any questions so far? Um, you wanna, I'd like to, address? to. Are we able to edit out some of those? If you scroll down, there were a couple of pages I had a question on. Um, yeah. Where, where it starts showing me the graphs a little bit. Yeah. Right. Like. Uh, uh, maybe these ones here. Yeah. That all. Mm -hmm. That all has to do with what we decide to input as far as property, right? Solds and all that. Yep. Uh, this is pulling directly from the comps. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. If we scroll up a little bit. I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more, a little bit, two more up. So that, those two, are we able to edit those? No, not at present time. Okay, cool. Yep, those are just as is. All right, awesome, awesome. These are these are certainly, the, the part of the CMA is of course educating. Not everybody knows what a CMA is or what value it actually provides. Yep. So in, in this scenario, these, these pages were added with pretty standard um, educational, pieces that will kind of give a seller an idea of what could influence the pricing. Um, and these are just some of those ideas. So that's what that one is. This one tells them what a CMA is as well. Just kind of an introduction, providing an explanation for why, why am I getting this link or what, what value does this actually provide me? Nice, dude. Are yep, we not, able cur to, not currently able to be edited? Are we able to uh, add any type of document in here that we want? Not yet. Um, right now, the you you have to use only the pages that are available, so you can remove them and add them back, but you cannot add a custom page yet. Got it, got it. All right, cool, man. I like it. I yeah. like this yeah. overall. It looks awesome, and it makes it so easy for us. I love the mobile. We used this the last time you brought it up, which was a couple. I think it was a couple of months ago. Sounds right. Yeah. And uh, I know Mark tested it out and immediately sent me a text with it. I was like, "This is awesome." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we'll, let's build one. Let's actually build the CMA. So I'm going to click on the continue option and actually the CMA is ready now. It's already been published on the website. Wow. Um, and you'll see that there's a loading icon down here on the PDF line. That's because the PDF will take a minute to, to populate. We'll okay. see if we can get that generated while we're on the, the call today. But the, um, 
after I immediately create it, I've got two options here on the right side that I can actually email it out um, if I had my email account integrated, but otherwise I can use this one. So this will let me just send it right out. It has included a hyperlink right here mm -hmm. with some default text for the address. And I can just send that right out to the lead. Um, if I wanted to add some other CCs or BCCs on that as well, I could. Um, I can text it out as well. And it automatically pulls it into a text message. So those are options. Or I can just click on the link uh, right here and let me move that zoom bar out of my way. There we go. And right here, um, we've got our CMA. So as you can see, it's got my featured image populated here on the right side. It's got the, the address, the, um, all the information that I had requested for it to include. And by the way, you can go back and edit that at any time. If you wanted to remove a page later on, or maybe you wanted to, um, maybe you started a CMA, but you didn't finish it. Mm -hmm. The system will track that. It will mark it as an incomplete CMA, but you can still go back in and, and finish that. So you can, it'll auto save your activity when you're creating the CMA. That's cool, man. So page by page, we'll just kind of scroll down here for a second. You can see we've got the resume. Here's a little bit about ABC Real Estate. That's our company. Um, the value an agent can provide you as a seller, of course. How a buyer will get their information. Pricing influencing. What's a CMA? Here's the actual comps. This is, of course, what people are looking for on a map. And I can scroll side by side to see what those are. Um, or I can go down here to this list, which is, of course, the rows. So I can see piece by piece how they compared to nice. each other. And so once again, I can scroll to the, to the right to see all of them if I want to. Awesome. Here's the property averages. I love this part because it just automatically populates it onto the graphs. Someone gets a really good idea from these vid visuals of what, kind of what the prices are. Mm -hmm. And this gives you visuals for the, the price ranges. Here's your average price per square foot, average selling time. And this one's cool because it tells you days on average days on the market and the percent of list price. I mean, on average with what we've got selected here, 102.4% of list price. So Ooh. sets valid expectations uh, kind of for what to expect here. That's awesome. I like this. There's your estimated market value uh, that, that you chose and it gives you that price range as well. An explanation of how pricing works. Obviously, with the lower price, you get more potential buyers, etc. This part, um, I, this is an interesting part that you can actually. Um, this will pull from your CS, your CRM, and it'll it'll find active buyers that fit into the criteria. So it'll find your total active buyers. This is a very small database demo account, so it only had twenty one leads in there for buyers, and those that match the price range, it looks like all of them do. And in that area, none of them do. Now you could manually go in and edit that if you wanted to, or if you have a, a database that has a lot of buyers in it, the system's gonna automatically recognize those and pull them into this to show you, you've got a funnel of people that you already work with that could be potential buyers for this property. Eric, uh, are, we, yeah. are we able to click on that and like see what, what, which, which buyers in our CRM that is, or is it just like 21 that's it? Or, or whatever the number is. Yeah, it's not clickable from the, uh, the the leads perspective. Obviously, if you go back to the CRM, all it's doing is it's grabbing my buyer leads. So you see that we've got 22 leads in here total, one of which is a seller. So it's okay. finding all my buyer leads. And then in their price criteria, uh, their search criteria right here, it's just seeing if that matches their area. Okay, so is there a way so to just Because like for some, like some of us, we have like, you know, thousands and thousands of leads. Like, are we able to filter? Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're going yeah, to you can, you can do that. Right here. Yeah, so you can filter. You can also go to your listing discovery, put the address in, and then look at the buyer matching column and see that your number of buyers there for that property. For that address, for that CMA. <laughs> yeah, for the, the yeah, CMA would uh, that address in that case it's a, it's a property that's not on the market, so it's not going to be in your on your listing discovery page. So you could grab a similar property uh, to find it that's within that criteria range. Or right that here. Or yeah, you can use these filters. Yeah, yeah, it won't be. Yeah, it won't be. It won't be the target property. It'll be one of your comps. You can do a search for it and uh, get an idea that way. Okay. Yep. But yeah, you do have filters on the people page that you could do it by price range, bedrooms, bathrooms. So uh, you should, you can use that to kind of get a good idea of what's going on. Cool. All right. Um, that is the CMA. Now let's see if we can go back to 
the PDF. I just wanted to show you the PDF. And I know we're getting close to time already. So let's just download that PDF so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Um, and the reason why I like the PDF is that it has some things that you don't see on the link version. Mm -hmm. And so here's, here's what that PDF looks like, just page by page, ready to be printed out, ready to be distributed to someone if you wanted to. Um, it's got all the same content for the most part, including your comps, everything's on a map. Um, it's all here ready for you to use. What it does have that the, the web, the link version doesn't have is mm -hmm. it actually goes into detail on specific properties. So here are my comps. It actually has a page for each of them. So I can see what those comparable properties are. It gives me some pictures of them from the MLS. So I can see, you know, what's the, is it, does it look somewhat like my house as a seller? So I can gauge interest. Um, so in, in other words, all of those comps that I selected, they each have their own page. Dude, like I like that a lot. Is there, do we have that ability to, to do that for the, the live link to be able to circle through or scroll through the pictures because sometimes we need to take a look at what condition the home was in as well and we've never been in some homes mm -hmm. yeah so on the so when you're looking at the cma i do know that let's see if we can find it uh listings these should be uh my zoom is all there we go if i remember right um I don't think it has the scrollable. I thought some of these ones are clickable. So on the map, I can tell you these are clickable. So if you wanted to find these, they'll actually take you to the website. Got and it. you can see what's live on the MLS or sold listings if you have that sold data. In mm -hmm. fact, this one is a sold listing. So yes, if you have that uh, from the map, yes. I think we'll need to do mm -hmm. some improvements there to make sure that it can look something like what you're accessing here and easily access them side by side. But not, not at the present time. It would just be off the map by clicking the link. All right. Yep. Dude, I love it. So that's the PDF version of the CMA. Um, just some quick notes on the CMA uh, that I, I want to make sure to get in for everybody here is that the system will track and give you notifications when someone has looked at the CMA. So someone opens that link there, you're going to get a, a, an alert, an opportunity notification saying someone viewed the CMA. And that's, that's obviously cool. super valuable for you. You can reach out and see if they have any questions at that point. So um, the system will also just track all of their engagement with the CMA. So if they have, every time you create a CMA, it will create a system record for you. Um, if they view the CMA, there will be notes on the lead record as well. It keeps track of all of that activity, notifies you so that you can pay attention to it. So obviously didn't get through my whole list of most of these features, but that's the gist of it. The CMA is nice and quick and easy. A buyer CMA is the same process, but you're looking at finding fair market value for a, a property and showing someone the comps that yeah that that price is probably pretty reasonable as as their agent so any yeah, questions that we want to address man. this is good i like yeah. it a lot now you make me you maybe want to use this as much as i can which is nice yeah uh, i yeah. love this man Eric, what's really thank what's really nice and convenient about the way chime does the cmas with the links in the pdf is that you can schedule a zoom call with or FaceTime or whatever with your lead and basically side by side in real time go over it so you can kind of work this into like a mini listing presentation essentially to basically say like look here's what your property is like this is what the market is like let's just have a conversation and then okay you're you're you know you're you're willing to list when can I visit the property and get a little let's get some final numbers here final condition and really make sure that you're set up properly to to list and sell instead of just list and sit. So I think that's a good good use of this. And I can definitely see Chime because sometimes I can um, anticipate them a little bit. I can see them uh, adding like a listing presentation module to build off of this with. So. All right, dude. Yep. Absolutely. Very, very good point. I love that. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate mm -hmm. that, man. It's, and Eric, thank you for great. jumping on again. What, what are we going to talk about next with you, man? <laughs> it's a good question. I guess, uh, well, I guess we'll find out. There's lots to talk about when Chime, right? What do you, so what do you want to dive into? Adam, what should we talk about with Eric next? Mm, that's a good one. Might have, to give, might have to give some thought on that one. Might have to give some thought. Yeah, maybe, you know what? What about diving deeper into the actual website? Just showing what you can or can't do. 
That would be yeah, that would be good. I don't think we've ever done one on that. I don't no. think we have. I think that would be super valuable. Yeah. Let's do that because a lot I get a lot of questions like, did you did you design that website on your own? What can you do? What can't you do? Let's let's do that. Yep. And then web, Adam, web design web design 101. Yeah, on time. And then Adam, if you think of anything valuable that we should do, uh, just throw it out to me. Sounds good. Eric, Mark, Adam, thanks for being on, guys. Appreciate you. Guys. Take care, guys. Thank thanks, you. everybody. See everybody.